Hello, this lecture is on the expulsion of the Acadians. The first Europeans to establish themselves in today's maritime provinces were the French Acadians. Their story include a chapter of authoritarian horror. In the 1750s, political elites devised a deportation policy that caused grief and death for many Acadians who had no viable recourse once the tyranny took over. From 1604 to 1607, the French attempted to establish a colony in the present day Maritimes. Too far from the best fur regions, the French gave up their settlement of Port Royal. After Pierre de Gois, Sir de Mont, and Samuel de Champlain left Port Royal, the French focus was on the St. Lawrence River. The French, however, had not completely abandoned Acadia. Acadia did promise better farming because of its warmer climate. Jean de Biencourt, de Poutrincourt, wanted to settle in the area that he found beautiful. His small band of followers began turning land into sufficient farms, but English raiders destroyed their gains in 1613. A more serious settlement attempt was in 1632. Many settlers from the west coast of France were farmers with important skills. They successfully reclaimed fertile marshlands in Acadia by building dikes and draining ditches that tamed the strong tides of the Bay of Fundy. Their system of farming allowed fresh water from rain and snow to run off the marshes during low tide while keeping salt water from entering the dike farmland during high tide. The initial stage was labor intensive, but the Acadians did not have to clear forested land or remove rocks from the soil. The Acadian con colony grew steadily after the mid 1600s. Throughout the 17th century, Acadia was ruled by either France or England. There were approximately 3,500 Mi'kmaq and Malasite natives in the region and intermarriage of natives and Acadians was common. With the 1713 Treaty of Utrecht, England gained possession of Acadia. Under the British, Acadia became Nova Scotia and Port Royal was renamed Annapolis Royal. The French retained Ile Saint-Jean and Ile Royale, today's Prince Edward Island and today's Cape Breton Island. At the time, there were approximately 2,000 Acadians and the British were, were content to let them stay in Nova Scotia. The French wanted to build up their numbers on Cape Breton Island by having Acadians relocate there. However, the Acadians lacked interest and instead preferred their valuable farmland over the rocky soil of Cape Breton Island. The Acadians could practice their Catholic beliefs but they had to promise loyalty to Britain. Preferring neutrality, the, the Acadians did not take an oath of allegiance. The British did not press the issue, at least not until later. The Acadians themselves only wanted to be left alone and live peacefully on their farms. They did not want to support either France or England. If they supported England, they ran the risk of reprisals by the Mi'kmaq who were allies of the French. The loyalties of the Acadians were to their families and their villages rather than to France. The Acadians depended on themselves for food, shelter, and clothing. They did not divide their land as the French did in the St. Lawrence River Valley. Rather than neatly divided strips of land along one river, the Acadians utilized land around scattered villages. 
They were part of the trading network of the North Atlantic and carried on a thriving, often illegal trade with New England. The Acadians traded wheat, salt, pork, fur, cattle, fish, and furs to New Englanders for molasses, sugar, iron tools, furniture, cloth, brandy, dishes, and other products. There was always the threat of raids by New England pirates, but the period from 1730 to 1748 has been described as the golden age in which Acadian society flourished. In 1750, the Acadian population was approximately 12,000. The return of Louisbourg to France in 1748 as a result of a treaty was a disturbing outcome for New Englanders. They viewed it as an act of betrayal by the British government. Governor William Shirley of Massachusetts insisted that Acadia be settled by New England settlers. He wanted to see the removal of Acadian troublemakers. The hostility of Mi'kmaq natives also became a more serious issue. Numerous times the natives attacked British trading and fishing boats. In wartime, the French paid natives for British scalps. The British became doubtful that the Acadians would be loyal to England during a war. Although there was no declaration of war between England and France, military conflict broke out in Acadia in 1755. The British advance on the French fort of Beaujour on the Chenecto Isthmus. The French were vastly outnumbered and outgunned and they surrendered within a few days. Those who fought with the French included about 300 Acadians. The French still had Louisbourg, which received food from Acadian communities. The British strategy was to terminate the supply by deporting the Acadians, which would also eliminate any rear guard threat when the British attacked Louisbourg. There were obvious benefits for New Englanders if the Acadians were forced off their rich farmlands. As the English saw it, justification for this rather daunting and harsh plan was that the Acadians had refused to swear an unqualified oath of allegiance to the British king. Expulsion was cruel, but there was enough Acadian support for France for the British to question Acadian professions of neutrality. The actual process unfolded quickly. In July 1755, deputies from the Acadian villages were ordered to Halifax to take the oath. When they refused, Governor Charles Lawrence of Nova Scotia, in power since 1753, decided on the ruthless action of deportation. England had recently suffered a major loss to France when the French and their native allies defeated General Edward Braddock's army near present-day Pittsburgh. British leaders used the military crisis and subsequent hysteria to proceed with their goal of expulsion. Acadian delegates tried to strike a compromise. The Acadians would surrender all of their firearms to the British as proof of their loyalty, and they would accept an earlier oath of their loyalty. The British did not budge. The Acadians would have to leave Acadia even though they had not officially supported France after 1713. The logistics of expulsion were formidable. However, the process of exportation was deemed possible because of the several hundred New England militiamen who were in Acadia at the time. In September 1755, males 10 years old or older were summoned to parish churches to be told of his majesty's intentions. 
the Acadians learned that their lands and homes and livestock were confiscated and that their families were to be transported out of the region. The prisoners were herded aboard ships. Women and children were also rounded up, but in the haste and confusion of the expulsion, families were separated when shiploads of men were sent off without their families. As the Cadians looked back, they saw the heavy smoke of their torched homes. Their homes, built and improved over many generations, became ashes. That year, the British deported over 3,000 Acadians, sending them to various ports of the 13 colonies and England. American colonists had not been informed about the Acadian arrivals and were in many cases reluctant to have a foreign and resentful influx suddenly thrust upon them. Worse yet were hundreds of Acadians who died on the ships and at their destinations. The ships carrying them often lacked cabin space and adequate supplies. There were Acadians who ran and hid in the woods, approximately 2,000 with only the clothes on their backs escaped to Prince Edward Island. Some managed to get to France, whose government, after granting them some money, abandoned them. Others made their way to New Brunswick, particularly along the coast and up the St. John River. Some reached New France. There were those who stayed in Acadia only to be uprooted later. The expulsion policy lasted until 1762, within an eight year period, between 6,000 and 10,000 were deported and scattered far and wide. Historians disagree on whether the expulsion of the Acadians was necessary. The debate was complicated because of contradictory evidence of an issue involving political and military considerations in England, France, the American colonies, and Acadia. Historian Naomi Griffiths explains that Acadian history, 1710 to 1755, provides endless questions of facts and interpretation, problems about what actually happened and whether it was brought about intentionally or not. As the years lead on to 1755, the problems which divide historians multiply and the events of the expulsion itself have been so diversely treated that one sometimes wonder whether the authors are writing about the same effects, the same events, end of quote. Some historians have argued that the expulsion was an expression of New England imperialism, a greedy desire to take over Acadian farmland, or it represented the vindictive policies of British military men such as Charles Lawrence. The deportation was conceived in hate, a prejudice of race and religion, according to one historian. Writing about the actions of Lawrence, one French historian charge that, quote, only a criminal soul could devise such a plot in all its details. Other historians have sided with the British. They state that such action was consistent for times of war. It was a bit of war between two enemies who had fought over this land for years. Possessions of no possession of Nova Scotia had become symbolic of their power and prestige in the international world. Military action demanded tough measures. The British were not too unreasonable in demanding an oath. Three generations had passed since the early 1700s when the British had gained control of Acadia. The normal practice in 18th century warfare was to avoid military conflict with civilians, but the British were convinced that the Acadians had provided the French and their native allies with intelligence, sanctuary, and logistical support. As one historian explained, the expulsion of the Acadians, however cruel for the victims, made sense to British officers in simple military terms. There were other historical examples of elites getting rid of stubborn minorities. In the previous century, King Louis III 
XIV expelled the Huguenots, that is the French Protestants from France. One consequence of the American Revolution was the banishment of many Tories from America. History reveals many examples of politicians devising inhumane policies. Nonetheless, it remains tragic that the first European immigrants to establish themselves successfully in the present day Canada's maritime provinces received such treatment. Many Acadians died of malnutrition, disease, exposure to harsh weather and shipwrecks. The historical record is contradictory but one can see that politicians devise a deportation policy that caused grief and horror for a minority that had no viable recourse once the authoritarian plan was in operation. It was a tragedy that no solution for both British security and Acadian survival was forthcoming. Thank you.